Hey everyone, Victor is here and today I have another awesome mechanism here for you. So looking at my starting material and my product, I can see that it looks like I had this benzyl group jumping around and the methyl group seems to jump around as well. But of course there are no simple rearrangements where the uh, alkyl groups can just move around the molecule, unless it's of course some sort of a carbocation rearrangement, but we are working in the basic conditions so we are unlikely to see any carbocations here. What I do see here though is that I have a carbonyl and another carbonyl in my starting material and I have this position in between my carbonyls, which is a quaternary position. And we know that in many reactions of enols and enolates, if we have a quaternary position in between two carbonyls, that can trigger a retro Dieckmann condensation or retro Klaisen condensation, uh, depending on the nature of the starting material. Since we are dealing with a cyclic molecule here, we are looking at the retro Dieckmann reaction. So what I'm going to do here, I will start by redrawing my starting material and the ethoxide that we have here as the reagent. Now, out of my two carbonyls, my ketone, this functional group, is going to be more electrophilic. So my first step here in this mechanism is going to be the nucleophilic attack onto my ketone, giving me the following intermediate. Now, next thing that's going to happen here is my oxygen is going to push my electrons down, essentially breaking the bond right over here between my carbons, let's call it carbon number one, and that will be my carbon number five over here, and also let's number this one as a carbon number six. And as I open this molecule up, I'm going to get the following intermediate, which I purposefully drew with this absolutely atrocious bond angles, but I wanted to show that I used to have a bond between these atoms and that bond is no longer there. So my atoms 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 are right where I indicated them. So now, if I redraw this molecule in a better way, I'm going to get the open chain version of this molecule with reasonable bond angles, and that's where numbering my atoms also comes really handy, because this way it makes my life way easier to indicate where all the groups are and not to misplace them or lose any atoms. So, for instance, I know that on carbon number 3 over here we have a methyl group, so so there is this methyl on carbon number three. Or my benzyl group right over here is sitting on carbon number five, so here is this group in my open chain molecule. Now this intermediate that I have here on the screen is of course an enolate, but I cannot just close it back up in the Dickman condensation because I am going to just finish with the same starting material and we know that we are going in a different direction. But I also see that I have another alpha position over here at the carbon number two, so I can analyze that position and have that part of my molecule be a nucleophile. So I'm going to show this re like so as an intramolecular process, whether it is actually intramolecular or we are going to be using a chaperone is a good question and you can argue with me in the comments below, but for the sake of time and space, I'm going to show this mechanistic step like this. But regardless how you might want to show that proton transfer, the next intermediate, the next enolate that we are going to get on this reaction is going to look like this. And the important thing here is that the left side of my molecule is now an enolate, so it is the left side that is going to be my nucleophile, and it is going to be reacting with my right side of the molecule, which now is going to be an electrophile. So if I wanted to show the curved arrows for that interaction, we are going to show electrons coming from our nucleophile towards our carbonyl, pushing electrons onto the oxygen like that, and in this case, I'm going to be making a new carbon-carbon bond between carbon number two and carbon number six in this molecule. Okay, let's make a little bit more space for the mechanism. All right, so now, once I have those electrons floating the way I'm showing here, and I'm making this new bond between carbons number two and carbon number six, and we are going to get the following five-membered ring as our intermediate here. Now, now, as I've mentioned, we are making a new bond between these carbons 2 and 6, so I'm going to squeeze that new bond notation right over 
here. And so the next part in our mechanism is going to be the living group dissociation from our tetrahedral intermediate. So oxygen is going to kick our ethoxy group out, giving us our dicarbonyl and of course the ethoxide that we have just kicked out. Now at this point in the mechanism we know that we are going to immediately deprotonate the position in between our carbonyls, which is going to be essentially a driving force for our reaction here, making the following enolate intermediate. And the last thing here for us in this mechanism is to neutralize our molecule and protonate that using the acidic workup, making our final product for which I just don't have enough space on the screen. But as you well know, the final product here is going to look just like this intermediate in the middle of our mechanism. So, what did you think about this mechanism? Did you figure it out or were you completely lost? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you learned something new today, boop that like button, check out this video next, and I will see you next time.